It's so hard to pick and choose when you have a brand new griddle. Today we broke out our first cook on the Blackstone 22 inch Adventure Ready. So I combined two of the iconic classics, a cheeseburger and a cheesesteak. Today we're making a cheesesteak burger. You guys watch this. Alrighty, to get started, let's talk about what's going on. We have a new setup here because we have our small griddle. I think it's worked perfectly. It's too high to go up here because I feel like I'm cooking all up here in my face and chest and all that stuff. So we just got a four by, what, two picnic table. I've got my little cutting board on there that we typically have on top. So this is the maiden voyage. So first things first, we've got it hooked up to our propane. Let the gas run through there. Going over the list of ingredients, we have some American cheese. We have some provolone cheese, some peppers and onions. This is a cheesesteak, not an authentic Philly style cheesesteak, so hold your horses. We have some fresh ground brisket burgers that I've done myself. Then we just have a little Worcestershire sauce, some mayonnaise. Honestly, I just wasn't sure what kind of sauce I wanted. My Texas rub, and then some good thick farmhouse butter buns. It needs to be a big bun to set up to a big old sandwich, big old burger. This is the deal, it's the uh, holidays, it's this time of year, this is where typically where we buy a lot of beef in bulk. Um, Kroger's has had $8.99 uh, prime ribs, standing rib roast. Um, Publix has had both $7.99 and now they've got $8.99. So typically this type of year, time of year, we like to buy in bulk. This is one of them that we saved from last year. It's a bone-in where we just have our butcher. Uh, this was from Publix where it just takes a whole bone-in ribeye and then slices it up into uh, steaks for us. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna get some prep work done. I know it seems like an expensive cut of meat, but honestly for $6.99 a pound, this steak right here was $7 or seven and a half dollars. So, you know, that's not that bad at all. The fat, what I'm gonna do is save before I start slicing because we're gonna use that fat as Thanks, son. The grease to lubricate yep. your griddle. That's exactly right. All right, so we got it broken up in two different groups. This is going to be the fat that we start putting on the griddle. That's going to be our oils today. This is spinalis. So since we're doing a cheesesteak, I'm just going to start slicing the beef thin. Right there is the eye of the ribeye. So we're just going to slice that and make some nice strips out of it. You're just looking to cut this as thin as possible, kind of like a shave style. As you can see, this is a well, well marbled um, ribeye, so I'm not worried about losing some of the fat that we trimmed off. It's got plenty of fat in it. All right, while our griddle's heating up, we're just going to add that beef right to the, the uh, griddle. I like to say when you first start off on griddle cooking, benefit yourself, right? Cook foods that are automatically fatty like this fat right here. Obviously, I'm just doing it to help grease the griddle because we're going to need it anyways. So instead of using oil or butter, you might as well you just use the fat that just came with it. You paid for it. All right, I've turned this side of the griddle up on high because this is going to be my sear zone. I think it's been on long enough for me to know that even on low, it's going to build heat, but I only shot 350, and that could be in, uh, two things. One, the air coming through, so I put my wind guards up, and two, this cold meat on the small griddle could take a lot of temperature away from it, and it just takes a little bit longer to build back up. So I'm going to go ahead and jack this side up on high, just so we can start determining our zone, getting that fat rendered. Now we got a good base right here with all that tallow, all that ribeye fat. So I'm gonna throw in the bell peppers to get those started. I can always take them off and add them later. And half the onion. Hit those vegetables a little, shake that. All right, let's look at our brisket burgers while everything's going on. All right, so we have our brisket burgers here. It's the first time I've done it, it worked out perfectly. I did eight to a package. Uh, these are six ounce patties made with my little Weber burger press. And then we um, uh, just use the bar parchment paper that I always use for smash burgers. Hit it with that uh, Texas rub that I like. It's just a little bit of seasoned salt, coarse black pepper, salt, and garlic. 
let that do its thing for a minute. Picking up that beef flavor, just moving them back. Still cooking that fat, still allowing that uh, fat to render to use that to our goodness. You guys see here that the right side's heated up, now it's starting to smoke a little bit, that's what we're wanting. It's pretty cold today. I'm not gonna lie. What is it? 40, maybe 40 degrees. Yeah, it's um, cold. I don't know how you don't have a coat on. <laughs> when we seasoned it the other day, I did notice when it was on for a long time and I was able to put my wind guards on there, the heat did creep up to about 550. Uh, season it and all that stuff. And it was hard to adjust it back down on low. We started off on low and I realized low was not gonna cut it today. So I think it's gonna be a little bit harder to learn because a couple of uh, variables that are going on. I, I left my expectations out the door of this griddle. I just wanted to have fun with it. This is not the griddle that's gonna be the standalone griddle on our deck, although some people do it because there's just two of them. So I wanna to try to do this the right way like I do the other griddles, but it might take me just a couple more days to learn it than what I initially thought. So far, I do know for a fact this is on low, this is on high. It's been on a good, I don't know, it's been on for a while. 400 and about 500 degrees over here. So to me, that tells me that you can have zone cooking with a small griddle. And as long as I can get that, then I think I'm happy. I mean, that's really all I'm looking for. Yeah, that's a great crust right there. That is a great looking crust. I'm gonna put my beef fat right here and as it re releases the fat inside of it, renders the fat, it'll be able to drain down for us. Perfect. Burger's going nicely. peppers and onions. Turning that side of the griddle down right now. Probably turn this side off. Let's just see what happens. It's me playing around right now. used to a small griddle huh <laughs> hey if you, we're gonna figure it out all right i like a little bit drier bun just because i feel like there's gonna be so much fat and grease in this recipe you can add your butter you can add your mayonnaise it's a personal preference i think i am going to turn this griddle back on low i don't think i'm done with it quite yet oh All right, just mound that uh, cheese steak up to match the burger. You know, if it's long like a cheese steak and you try to put on a round bun, it's not gonna work. So just thinking ahead here. Toasting our buns. One thing about it, you gotta control your knobs on this sucker. This ain't a set it and forget it style system right now. All right, just take these brisket burgers off really quick. Just let all that grease and stuff kind of like drain out of them, kind of let a little relax. You guys see we get some nice toast on our buns. 
Now we can probably turn it off. So this is the idea, just a little W sauce. Come back, hit it with a little mayo. Top that right there with a the bun. All right, guys, there you go. That's kind of like the best of both worlds. Like, how do you figure out which one to make first? Why not just make them both first? So things to note about the griddle, because it is the first cook. Um, really won't be reserved about it. I was surprised it needed that much heat to stay hot. I think that contributes, like I said, to two, two things. The wind or the temperature uh, and the wind guards. I put the wind guards on there and help the heat come back up. Maybe it's just one of those things where I got to keep them on all the time. That's fine. Um, just surprised that it needed that much heat. Typically these things run hot in perfect conditions and this is no different, but once the food got on there, it did seem like it zapped the heat away from it quite a bit, but it's a learning curve and we'll get there. Um, we did put it on a folding table because I feel like, uh, you know, when you guys are out there camping, RVing, tailgating and stuff like that, there's many different applications to do so. So I wanted to fit right in with the crew and that's what we did. So enjoyable like i i think there is a, a ways to go i'm interested to see what hibachi would look like a big breakfast would look like so we're gonna get those done and um and just enjoy it so with that being said let's be honest while we're really here <laughs> Yeah. Damn. That was my idea. That was surprising, but it's fantastic. It just that little bit too goes a long ways. A little bit of Worcestershire. And this the American cheese. This Worcestershire too is it's a little bit thicker than your typical Lee and Perrins, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually like it better. I know there's been a lot of rave about it. I can see why. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> it's <your> big. Don't <laughs> 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 mm. get choked up now. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> Obviously the American cheese because you get that creaminess about it. The provolone, classic cheese steak. Golly, that's good. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> Give me another bite. <laughs> that I wouldn't is... say it's surprising good, but I was worried about how it was going to come together because I thought, I know it sounds crazy. I thought it might have been competing flavors, and I like everything to be smooth and balanced, and you get like your, I agree with you. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> That's a menu item. It's, it's shocking how good it is. I don't know why it's shocking. A, bur a brisket ground burger and a cheesesteak. I don't know. It's it is, fantastic. It's incredible. It's incredible. All right, guys, there you go. That's our first cook on the Blackstone 22 Inch Adventure Ready. Had a blast. This is phenomenal. I think I'm going to make it again. I'm going to make it for somebody. Maybe oh, yeah. my dad, some friends or something. And maybe just try to up the game just a hair more. I don't know how, but I'm just surprised how good it is. Like, that's a good burger. That's a damn good burger. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. I'm going to sound enjoy this. I know.